Welcome everybody to a new short presentation and in this presentation we will uh, uh, throw um, a light on the uh, location of the root apex especially in cases when it is difficult to uh, locate where, is the, the, where the apex is located which is especially with low quality radiographs uh, of a low contrast, of a high contrast, or of a low density. Uh, most of us, when we see um, uh, a radiograph and we try to locate the apex directly, our eyes will be uh, direct, directed to the root apex. Uh, actually, uh, take a case of this uh, 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 left or two six uh, molar, which is root canal. Filled, and if we want to locate the apex of this tooth, I would advise that instead of looking directly at the apex of the tooth, we reverse the way we look at the uh, tooth. Now, instead of looking at the apex directly, which sometimes might be, you know, um, uh, misleading, especially by the great amount of superimposition of structures. <clears throat> The way I would advise in locating the apex of the of the tooth is is that instead of the look of the looking directly at the apex, but instead we will start from the alveolar crest. If you start from the alveolar crest and concentrate your eyes only on the periodontal ligament space, not the lamina dura, the periodontal ligament space. The periodontal ligament space is that 0.5 millimeter distance between the cementum, the root of the root, and the uh, surrounding bone, which we call the, <coughs> the uh, lamina dura. Now, for this case in particular, let's, let's start. Don't start by looking at here at uh, the apex. You will start with, for the mesiobuccal root. We will start by looking by tracing the periodontal ligament space from the from the alveolar crest. So we will go this way, this way, this way. This is the radiolucency over here. Now we will see that this root is dilacerated in a distal direction, and the filling is actually short. I'll go back again. This is the root configuration. Okay, so this is the geta perca which is present here. It is actually underfilled. Now, if you go at the, at the distal buccal root, and the distal buccal root, don't start here. You will be misled. So I'll go back again. I will go from the alveolar crest upwards, 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 upwards. All this is the root. Can you see it over here? This is the root of the tooth or the apex. Again, this this uh, filling, root canal filling, is uh, short. All this is short. Now, if you go to the palatal root, in the palatal root, you will start from the, again, from the alveolar crest. This is for the mesiobuccal. I want you to follow this line. Over here, over here, over here, over here. And then you go up. And then you go back again you end up by the alveolar crest. This line, actually, the radio opaque line, which might, we might think as, a, uh, think as a root canal filling, is actually the floor of the maxillary sinus. So this tooth, the three canals are underfilled because of a dilaceration, because of the uh, uh, estimation uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, this is the root over here, and this is the palatal root uh, over the uh, or, uh, or, uh, 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 which is cast, its image is cast on the uh, sinus. Let's take another example. This is a case of a broken uh, instrument, and if we want to trace the uh, distal root, we will see that instead of looking at the apex, we will be lost here because of the presence of the mylohyoid ridge. This is another case of a uh, tooth uh, four, uh, three six that is the lower left molar. Now, if you look at the uh, apex here, you will hardly 
find the apex. So what will you do, what we will do instead, is that we will trace the periodontal ligament space from the alveolar crest downwards. This is the alveolar crest over here. Uh, sorry, the P PDL. And then it ends up over here, and then it goes up all the way back. Okay? Now, if we go to the mesial root, in the mesial root, instead of looking at, a, at the apical area, we will, bo we will go back from the alveolar crest downwards, 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 and this is the, uh, uh, the periodontal ligament space. Now, if you try to magnify, actually magnifying the image sometimes, again, it will uh, b b b make us lost because we are stretching. Again, if we are going to uh, 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 zoom in this area, actually what we are going to do is that we are going, still we are lost, we are still lost. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the thing that, uh, let's take another example, this tooth. And instead here, you can hardly find the apex, right? But if we start from the alveolar crest and trace the PDL, not the lamina dura, because sometimes the lamina dura, it will disappear. See here, it is not present. But if you look at the, the mesial side of the root, you will see that the lamina, uh, lamina dura is present. Here it is lost. This is due to exposure factors, sometimes due to pathology, sometimes it's not present. But the thing that does not disappear is the PDL. So you follow the PDL all the way down up till here. And then this is the PDL up here. And then you go back again to the area that you would... Uh, back to the alveolar crest. Another example uh, of a tooth uh, uh, two six. Uh, here it's a root canal filled tooth. Let's start by this tooth. This is a two seven. This is the two six. See, here we are lost. Where is the apex? But if we start from the alveolar crest, up, up, up. This is the crest. If you want to the paleta root, again you will start from here, and then you go up. This is the root, or the apex. The mesiobuccal from the alveolar crest. This is a concat, but still we can follow this up till here. See, this area is actually a bone trabecule. See how clear it is here now. Alveolar, uh, the lamina dura is lost here, but you can find it here. But the thing that does not appear, as I said, is the uh, PDL. Again, mesiobuccal. Then I will go for the palatal from here. And then you follow up. So this, this filling is overextended. This is the apex, and this is overextension of the filling. If you go to the distal correct. Okay, another case. This is a, a lower right six, four six. The, can, the, the distal roots, here you can see, you can see two shadows. If I start from the alveolar crest from here, this is one. And there is another shadow, which is over here. So these are two roots. The same goes from here. You start from here, and you follow the PDL. This one is for the lingual, and this one is the for the for the buccal one. Over here, and then you go up, and there is another line over here, which is, as I said, is the lingual one. 
let's take this 407 for instance this is the PDL over here and then we go up the same goes for the other route another example a premolar let's take this canine for instance or oh, this is the uh, yeah this is the upper four this has two roots one and the other one is here I'm follow I'm simply following the PDL I'm not following the root another case which is this one which is a, that has a PFM see this is the palatal root because it appears sharper and the other one is I will start from the alveolar crest up 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 and then we go down and this is the buccal root and this is an upper extension of the uh, of the uh, phyllic so uh, I hope this is clear what we do is that we uh, instead of following the uh, uh, root itself we simply follow the PDL which is the thin 0.5 millimeter radiolucency that exactly follows the uh, uh, configuration of the root wherever it goes whether this tooth is dilacerated or straightforward root or it is more than one root uh, I hope this presentation was useful thank you very much